Hi everyone and welcome to one, another of my videos. Okay, um, which documents you need to get for the job uh, on the cruise ship? Um, right before we begin, um, I'm just going to mention that um, what's the content. So I'm going to be covering all the documents that you need. Uh, I'll go in detail about them. Uh, some some are more obvious, some are not, and then there's cruise line uh, requirements. Um, then again, shortly about myself and my relevance of the subject, <clears throat> I actually work for four cruise lines. I do have my own website, setforcruise.com as well. I write some articles, so I do some research uh, for that project as well. And of course, I'm trying to make um, one video about the subject of the, um, jobs and employment on, on the cruise ships on a YouTube channel as well. Um, and I always ask my friends as well, um, my prior colleagues, and uh, this is not an exception as well. I ask about the STCW uh, safety training and how did he do and how much they pay and where he was taking it. So the information in this is pretty um, resourced and quite accurate to the date. Just wanted to mention that. Um, right, about the video. So. Okay, what is not all about the pre-interview documents like academic certificates, recommendation letters, and CV? These are the documents you need. Um, of course, this is for uh, for uh, for the job in the hotel um, department. And uh, of course, yeah, well, if you're an off officer and bridge officer or something like that, you do need to do some access certificates. Um, that's um, concerned with the navigation of the ship and all this and you do them on a land you don't do them on a ship so I don't really know much about it but do I know that from my colleague she, um, she was very close with these officers so that's how they do and they need to redo the um, certificates uh, which you probably don't need for you definitely don't need for the, for the job in the hotel um, CV well c CV is the only thing really I actually wanted to mention is that if you're getting a job on a yacht uh, and then the CV looks a bit different. So I went through, um, I have all these agencies and everything listed on my website, and uh, I do look at them. I check the links if they valid and all this. So not for a cruise ship, not for a hotel department, really, not for a river cruise ship. Um, but uh, there's uh, separate CVs, like you know, like they put them out, uh, basically meaning that uh, it doesn't list the company and address of the company, like you know where the cruise line is located. It just lists the name of the ship and the captain you are working under. That's why there is. But there's uh, uh, and of course the agency what they do is um, they put your name on the top in the picture and of course work experience and educational experience um, but they don't give your like um, contact details like email like phone number to the prospective employers because they that's how they get the fees they got you together that so the employer doesn't contact you directly because that goes through the agency that's about that just to mention and this is not a video about that um, about the video, okay, the documents you need for a job on a cruise ship. So there's some more basic ones, so knowledge, passport, of course, uh, visa, I'll tell you which visa, of course, passport, you probably know everything about it. I'm just going to mention it just to cover all of them. I'll be quick about it. A medical exam examination certificate. Uh, so yeah, I did uh, that four times. I'm, I'm going to mention how that goes, how much it costs, of course. Uh, vaccination passport, well, this is pretty um, um, actual uh, very, 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 very popular subject these days uh, with regards to COVID-19. Um, but uh, these passports, I'll mention them, show them how they look and all this. Police clearance certificate, yes, you need to do that one as well. I'll mention about the things, uh, about the process and all this. Um, Simon's record book. Basically, it's the book. Uh, I'll show how it looks as well. I'll describe it um, where they record your service actually on the cruise ship. Um, which, like, basically, like you're going on a ship um, after the contract, you have a date, so you've been on the ship and all this. It's more for the seafarers. Sometimes on a, on a hotel department, you don't really going to be asked to have one. Um, very last one, number seven, do I need the STC uh, safety training certification? I'll mention some things about it, uh, the cost of course and uh, how it works and uh, do you need it? Basically there's going to be a separate video about STCW, about what the chapters are, what the training are, uh, how it goes as well. This is not the video because it deserves its own video. So th this is about the video itself. I'm going to bash through all these um, things now and let's just start and we'll start with the passport. Okay, the cost, cost of the passport. So if you never had the um, passport before, um, 
you probably don't need. You have an ID for European Union if you want to travel between countries. United States um, is more relaxed as well between the states, of course. That's the same country. But in Latvia, where I come from, it's next to the border of Russia. It's a small Baltic state. Uh, it's called Latvia. Uh, my pa passport costs like 28 euro or 52 if I if I want it in like uh, in a couple of working days. I think uh, two or three, and then five working days is 28. So almost double for it. I don't have a dual citizenship. I did live abroad many years, many countries, Republic of Ireland, UK, Switzerland, Germany. Um, I don't know, I just needed to actually look it up on the internet just to make sure I, I have some numbers as well. So in UK it's about £75 sterling, there's another price, I think expedited one, I didn't include it here. And in US if you need a passport it's like £110. Uh, um, dollars. So it's um, the process itself. Um, yeah, it used to be the time, so you needed to take a passport photo um, in the studio and just go bring that in and fill out the forms and everything. Now it's all automatic. Well, you just really, uh, I think there was some process in different countries where you can actually do it all, all online. I'm not too sure if it was only for the, for the renewing a passport or even the new ones. But some countries are better with that than the other ones, and it's going to show up also in police clearance. So, but by myself, I just need to get um, go in um, in my regional um, passport issuing um, department, uh, governmental institution. I just get my ticket, uh, wait for my call. They take a fingerprint, they take the picture on 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 a place, and um, you you come and in a different room you collect it after a few days. What you do. Um, the reason I'm mentioning a passport, you already knew, it, knew these things, of course you did. Um, but um, the passport is valid, valid until uh, 10 years usually. And the thing is, for on board, if you're going on a ship, your passport needs to be at least valid for one year after you step on board. So that's basically not knowing when your contract is ending or something extended. And, uh, and the longest contracts there are for uh, different positions, uh, not for senior positions that get like four months on, two months off, um, shorter contracts like, um, but it, there are positions that you actually work for nine nine months on, on the ship, um, and that's why they want your, um, your passport valid at least one year, and as you know on a ship, uh, if you work, um, you can't be, you need to be at least two months every year on a land, so the contracts can't be really more than eight, nine months, uh, maybe ten, um, but uh, not definitely more than that, so make sure your passport is valid. Um, I'm going to come back to this a little bit, um, just because I'm, I'm moving forward for the visa. Um, so with a visa, um, which type of visa? C1D uh, and B1 slash B2. So even if you're not going traveling to United States, uh, they might ask you actually get this visa. And that's what happened to me. I was based in Europe, um, and next was uh, South America. And I really, for the next two, they, they knew the itinerary where the ship is going to be going, and I was being stationed on the same ship. But they still asked me to do it. That could happen. You transferred, but most mainly it happens to because of the um, because of the uh, state of Florida, which is. Uh, really the cruise terminal uh, of the world. Let's just say um, there's two biggest cruise lines, um, not the sub coordinates, not the corporation, it's like Carnival Cruise Lines and um, um, Royal Caribbean. They both pretty much have like 25 ships and what happens is there's about one ship is in uh, Australia usually, there's one in Asia usually, there's one in Europe usually, um, there is one in Alaska, um, which is the west coast of US, and all the other like 20 ships are for both of the companies are in Caribbean going through the uh, cruise there and it's the best one of the famous <laughs> it's a cruise terminal of the world because all the ships are stationed there everybody wants to go to the Caribbean and even if they've done the cruise before they come back on the same cruise or a bit different um, islands and they do that so that's why they're going to ask you for, uh, for the visa itself um, C1D uh, visa is actually is, um, is a Siemens visa um, so you can work in the ships and you can stop in our US ports. Um, that's valid for five years. And then the B1, B2, that's if you want to spend like two months uh, on a land in the US after your contract, you can do that per year. Um, and uh, that's an optional visa, but uh, you can actually apply them for together. So it costs itself uh, is, is like $160. And, um, and, um, 
and uh, you can apply for both of them at the same time, the same fee. Um, well, the process itself, uh, paperwork you need, um, you're going to get LEO, uh, basically that means letter of employment, it's like single page uh, letter, it can be sent over the post or it, c it usually comes in email, um, it has three parts, one, one for, the, for, the, for the embassy use, one for the border use, and one for your own copy of it. I can't show them here because it's actually private and um, a company <laughs> uh, I used to work for, they not going to be happy if I do that. Um, it's just a basic A4 uh, sheet, to be honest, and you need to take that, uh, it basically says your name, it says which ship you're going to be working, which company you're going to be working, or which ship you're going to be working, and uh, when you're going to be joining, approximate date. And you need to take it with your passport to the uh, visa. Um, embassy of the U United States, because we're speaking about C1 and D visa. So, um, so that's the letter of employment you get from employer after your interview, and you get that, and then you start doing your uh, your, your paperwork, like you know, passport, visa, and all these things. So it's gonna come forward. Um, so you need that. Um, the process itself, I mentioned, it's one hundred sixty dollars. Um, you need to register online. Um, you pay online as well. You can do the bank transfer, something like that. Um, and um, I need, I have to tell you, it's it's. I used to do it before 2000, and we just needed to do an application form, uh, subject it, and then uh, come for the interview. But this this time, that's for the last few years, uh, more than the last few years, in 2008, you can do everything online. It's a bit tricky. That web page is a bit um, buggy. It's like you know, it, it can be very slow, and it doesn't turn the next page. So um, be careful. It's going to take time. Um, um, and I hope you don't need to start again, which happened to me at least once, and it takes time. And um, you pay the fee, you fill in the, um, the all the questions there. Um, of course, the reason, because you're asking where you live, and uh, where you lived in the last few years, and all these things. And um, when you pay it, then you schedule them the same system. Uh, online, you schedule the interview. And uh, the interview itself... Um, you, I, I did the first one actually when I was living in London, and I turned up on the embassy. I was always early. Um, I'm always come early, like you know, like 45 minutes or something like that. The embassy is so big. There's so many people. I took my way after the lunchtime, and I actually got to all the interview and everything. Um, but um, and then you just hand it over the passport, and the passport is ready. At the same time, they just tamper it, do it, everything there if it's approved. Of course, I saw somebody who wasn't approved. Um, he was not really happy. He was in front of me. But that's what I did in my country. I did it back in Latvia, uh, which is a smaller country. There was not too many people. I overheard the, uh, the discussion and all this. The main questions are, do you have firearms, do you know how to use them, or like something like that. That's a very um, common question after 9-11. Um, and of course they ask us, like, they usually ask the questions like, oh yeah, the cruiser job is very fun, and this probably came up in every single um, interview, because it comes to... And um, I was like, this was earlier in the morning, and I said, like, well, now it's basically lots of work. Um, and he says his face actually changed. So you probably want to tell, at least be optimistic that uh, you're going to enjoy the job and just, just you know, any interview, just be optimistic and happy person and say everything is fine. Um, so the visas itself, so um, the C1D uh, visa is five years uh, valid, and B1, B2 is, uh, is, is actually valid for... Um, for 10 years. And uh, of course, these visas are the same as the password, they need to be valid for one year. Um, on, the, uh, on the day you step on till the, till the end of the contract, that should be one year. Um, and uh, on board, yeah, that's, that's what it is. So uh, you can hand over the passport with the visas, everything, they can double check that, of course. Um, at the airport itself, um, that's a tricky one, and I mentioned lots of, uh, lots of ships going actually from Miami or there. And if it's um, American visa, of course, you enter America, and what happens is usually even if you're in Europe, there's only like few airports, like uh, Frankfurt Airport or uh, uh, Heathrow Airport, or uh, I think one was actually, uh, I flew back to Moscow, I've, and then I got the connection flight, which was cheaper. And um, Aeroflot is actually a good company. I really, really enjoyed the food, really enjoyed the plane. Everything was good. It's not that uh, horrible like somebody may think. It's actually good. Um, but when you arrive there, basically what happens is the all these small countries like uh, I come from Latvia. We don't have uh, we have international airport, but it doesn't have uh, transatlantic, um, so it doesn't cross the oceans or anything further than Europe itself. Um, 
And uh, what happens is you usually fly all together, maybe in Frankfurt, lots of people, and then you get one of these big planes, like 300 passengers or something. So what's going to happen is... Uh, in Miami, uh, or uh, maybe a different airport, um, then um, this this is where the nightmare starts because you have all these people, 300 people, they all process one by one. So, um, and you, you you already know you're going to be in a line, good 45 minutes or one hour when you get there, and then uh, so. And of course, you show them LEO, the letter of the employment, which is not a contract, but this is a simple one-page sheet, as I mentioned, and you need to show that to them as well. Most, it's only happened to me once because of my um, job description was officer title, so that they let me through. But basically, what is going to happen? They're going to ask you to go in the waiting room. Um, one of the colleagues, not the person itself who's checking the passport, somebody which is going to call a colleague, so they're going to escort you there, and then they're going to take the passport, and then they're going to take the. I'm not sure the password, but the employment letter definitely. So it says um, um, this has company details like you know Royal Caribbean, Miami address, and everything. There's a phone number. So basically, what they do is they pick up the letter because um, um, they don't know maybe somebody's I don't know faking it. Maybe um, these documents are pretty like they have a stamp and everything, but they are digital. And um, they call up the company and say, okay, well this guy is in the airport now, and uh, is he going to be joining the um, ship tomorrow? And uh, and um, and uh, if you're expecting him, and the company says yes, yeah, you go through, and then you go and collect your luggage and all this. So, um, visa expires. As I already mentioned though, it's five years and uh, ten years. But what happens with expires? Like you know, it's like you need to change your passport, which can happen as well. But your visa is valid. Um, so um, basically, you need new passport. Your visa is valid. What to do? And uh, it's not actually very bad because. Um, in Latvia as well, I mentioned we do it in a personal, in UK as well, um, as there's one option, you could go personal um, new passport um, um, issuing, uh, you just um, put your signature and they take your fingerprint and they take your photo. And you just tell them, have the passport with you, and you just tell them, you know, um, I need this passport, I need to keep it because of visa. And I need a new one because uh, it's not going to be valid till the end of my contract and I'm traveling now away. Um, so basically what they do is they take a passport, they put, punch some holes in not uh, except only the pages where are the visas, they leave that there. So it is very, uh, um, that um, translates that um, the passport is invalid, only the visa is valid. So you can really literally just have the same visa um, with a new passport and old passport together, take them all together and you can cross the border. So there's no need to do another visa if it hasn't expired. So just wanted to mention that, that's why the passport was included, that's why the visa is included. And and um, that's why I mentioned it, and this is pretty common. Um, medical examination certificate. So you need to pass the medical examination, and um, they send you a sheet of paper. I can't show them as well. It's very private, pretty much. Um, and... Um, it's like a three pages or something, all this, and, and they list everything, like, you know, you, uh, like, um, and you receive that, and then there's also a list of the places you can go for the, for the medical. So, um, basically in which countries and in which uh, places they do that, like uh, Siemens Medical uh, or uh, something like that, and of course in in England there's ENG1, and it's not only in England, it's a medical, and it only costs like really 150 pounds sterling. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, if you're going to a private one, um, well, I did like 180 for in Russia. I did. Well, um, we just came on a ship there, and I needed for the next company, and I still was employed by that company, and I got there. I think it's like 250 euro, you know, in Europe as well. Basically, because it includes lots of things, you might need to travel to a different country because your country is not included. Uh, can happen and be ready for actually for one day to spend there just because of meaning that they're gonna take extra x-ray of upper body so you're just gonna have a list and you'll be running it through the through the uh, cabinets of uh, different doctors like you know so x-ray is one um, hearing and eyesight that's another two um, there's a blood test of course there's other blood blood the leak fluids you know which ones are those um, and uh, there was more things as well oh yeah the vaccination and everything. I'm going to mention it now. Um, dentist. Well, dentist actually wasn't on my on my list, but I have a full seafarer's uh, certificate, which is actually work on a ships. 
not being a seafarer. So, but the company doesn't actually ask the dentist. And then I actually went to my dentist back at home because I was two, two months back at home. So I got to my dentist. Um, she fixes some things. And then I go do the medical because I need that for uh, every two years. You need to, to do that. So I went to the medical and... Uh, and uh, so the dentist was there she actually showed me like a list oh this needs to be repaired this needs to be repaired so she showed me a diagram of all my teeth and everything i said well no this this is actually the teeth I'm, the, my dentist uh checked two, two, two days ago she fixed it so i was like um no i'm not gonna do that so i went to the, to the main doctor and i said well you know dentist is not included in my list i don't want to do the teeth again and she's actually wanting me to do that so you need to pay extra for that so it's uh, yeah it's valid for two years um so and uh, you need to redo the examination. So um, sometimes the fee are, fees are reversed, but main, mainly not. So this is the examination. Be ready there to be for for a day, uh, almost a day, because there's gonna be lots of people. They're gonna, you're going to be just running like uh, headless chickens uh, up and stairs. Uh, cabinets. One is full. You have a line there. You go to another one first, and then you come back to the whatever is on the list, and that's how it goes. And this is about uh, fees and everything. Just wanted to know, and it's pretty, 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 pretty. Uh, detail thing. Right, the vaccination passport. Okay, well, vaccination passport is something that's coming up now, but uh, CFRs do that and uh, you need it. Um, cost, I can't really remember how I got it. Uh, I'll show how they look as well. And the cost was like um, just like six euro. I can't remember now, but I got it on the spot. Um, how they look like. So this one is like the international one. And you see, like, it says international certif certificate, vaccination, or prophylaxis. Okay, well. And uh, on the right hand side, you actually see the entries. Like you know, the, the small stickers come from um, from the uh, capsules there where the medication is, where they take it. They have these small stickers. They have a date when it's um, vaccinated, and I'll show you what's actually for the vaccination and how it goes. This is actually the new one, and I have it on me. And I have this old one, like you know, from my my country, like passport of immunization. And you can see on the right hand side how many uh, shots I have got. And I'll have a look. I'll tell you now uh, what actually should be there. So what should be on on it. So um, I actually went to my medical, the ones that um, the issued the um, cruise line issued, and I needed to get like you know I needed to get this all done, and this is what came up. And if you can see, like left is Royal Caribbean and right is uh, Carnival, and I'm bottom there. I think the right is actually Carnival, yeah, and bottom there I think it's from Disney, but it's all the same thing, like you know. Um, and so it's like uh, measles. Then there's uh, mumps virus, um, rubella measles, uh, like bacterial infection, I don't know what that is, uh, what that is, uh, and varicella as well, and then uh, you see yellow fever, I actually did the yellow fever for the first company, which doesn't show here, I did it for Yacht of Seaborn, and uh, the small ship actually going in, uh, was, was next year when I was supposed to come back, was actually going down the Amazon, so uh, yellow fever, there's mosquito bites, and um, um, you can get infected with that, and you get really, really bad uh, symptoms and, uh, and spasms and uh, and, um, and no appetite to eat, and you have muscle pains, yeah, spasms, and uh, so such a thing. But the other ones are all like measles and mumps and everything, and then you have the date, and then you have the re-vaccination and everything. They can do the vaccination there on place as well. When you're doing the medical, so they can actually fix you up like that, you know. Um, so that basically covers the vaccination passport. Uh, you get one. I, I've traveled with the both of them. I was a kid, you saw I had many vaccinations. They need to do every year or two. I don't know. And um, that's how it is. Now, as an adult, I don't have that much, really. Um, okay, vaccination passport. That, that's covered as well. Um, police clearance certificate. Uh, okay, police clearance. So... Um, Cost of it itself, uh, I come from Latvia, so it's like 24 um, euro. It's like you get it in five days, um, or um, you pay 52 and then you get it in one working day. Um, so it's like a double as well. Um, um, costs in UK uh, 55 pounds sterling. I just googled it up uh, from Acro. Um, and US was like eighteen dollars, but I needed to Google the dub. However, I did it in in, uh, in UK as well, and I wanted to do it in Republic of Ireland because um, in, I was I was I originally from Eastern Europe, but um, I was living in London for five years and then three years I actually in the Republic of Ireland. So. Um, um, when I contacted the um, company, and this was actually very strict there because you there's only like few people actually. Uh, 
handle the money. Of course, it's the accounting office, and of course, it's the um, reception. And all the other people are you just um, the, the guests that use the room key. So they just charge everything on it, and then I come pay the bill at the end. So they wanted to check my background for uh, eight years. Um, that was actually pretty. Eight years going back, that was actually pretty uh, extensive. Um, Republic of Ireland. I don't. I can't remember. Um, I don't know actually how that happens because they changed the mind. The company changed the mind. They only said I need a background for five years. So. And um, you actually go into the local guard station where you're supposed to live. That's like police station, the call guard, of course, in Republic of Ireland. And then you need to fill out, um, 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 fill in the request, and then you get it. I, I don't really know how. I didn't do it later on. I didn't have to, so I don't know. Um, in UK, that's simple. You just need to do. You can do it easily online. Submit your papers, a uh, copy of your official document. Your address is where you lived for the last five years. Um, then um, uh, and of course uh, I think there was a copy of bill and they send it uh, electronically over to you and it just says uh, okay no convictions and all this um, so um, that's how it is um, in Latvia I, I did mention we actually need to go to the in, uh, institution that's actually next to the investigative uh, police uh, you fill out the form you hand it in a form is from internet you hand it in and uh, you need to be present by, by a person and then uh, you, you just get it uh, in the next day or after the five days if you don't pay in, the, in there and you pay with a the card there or with the bank transfer not, not in the cash Police clans um, valid until it don't have really a val validity of that. Basically, what you do is after the interview, they can ask you for all these questions, uh, these these items which you need, and uh, that's when you start doing them. And you probably want to do the like medical last because uh, you know you want to be it valid for more than that, and uh, then you probably just do the police clearance office uh, certificate after the interview, and then that's still valid. And after that, you don't need to do it. You need to renew it, and that's a basic A4 sheet with uh, with um, a signature and uh, with uh, uh, with the stamp of the institution and all that. Um, right. Moving forward, Siemens record book types. Okay, let's have a look how it looks. So this is my one. I I'm, I kind of got rid of the um, I got rid of the um, my details, but it it looks like this is my document, and this is the passport type one. There's ID type as well, which I heard Bermudas are doing. This is how it looks. It looks like a passport, and basically on the right hand side you can see um, that's where they track the your service. So for a hotel you might not need one, but you can get that as well, like you know. And I got it over the internet, I, 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 I applied for it, I was still living in UK, they sent it over to me, I got all these things ready to go, um, I think I needed to fill that out, uh, um, put my uh, my uh, my new photo in there, passport photo, and on the right hand side I mentioned they, they, they write down the ship's name uh, when you started and when you finish your contract. So it's more for the people because if the senior officers they want to do like navigational skills uh, um, tests, they need to do they need to spend certain amount of time on the on the on the ship for for even that to be applied. But um, this is how it looks. Um, so I mentioned the types, uh, the cost itself. Um, well, um, cost itself was like hundred dollars, not more than that. I uh, can't remember exactly, but you can probably um, easily just just Google it up. It's not going to be that much, and uh, it stays like that. What it is, you don't need to renew it. Uh, I mentioned the process; you can do it online, and uh, you might actually want to do it even if they don't ask for do it. Because what happened to my colleague is she's from Georgia, uh, so she's not from Europe Union. And she's not from US, of course. And uh, she had a local Siemens book, and she did it for herself. And I didn't need to do it, but I needed to do it for one company, the first one. And then I had a break, and then I got it. So she's from George. George, she can't actually enter the EU, um, European Union, because if you're on a ship, and you're on a ship, and it has bah Bahamian flag, so you're on the land of bah Bahamas, so which you can do it. So and the crew office, you know, they the one that, that helps out the crew. They said, well, you can't actually leave the ship, and she was really upset and she there. But they found out a way, and they actually got the Siemens book from Bermuda, Bahamas. 
and um, it was picked up by the person in the UK, so we stopped in the UK, um, the uh, port agent, um, the company you pay, the ship company pays, um, that gets uh, the post for you, uh, they get some, uh, I don't know, passengers, uh, luggage missing uh, from airport or all this, so they got the Siemens book, they have it sent over there, it brought on board, and she could actually enter in the EU, so she didn't have the... Um, Visa, but she had the Siemens record book, so she could actually go along uh, in all the European ports in in UK, no, Norway, Denmark, uh, Finland, and uh, Estonia. So you might actually want to get that. And uh, I don't know about well, DLT, I can't, didn't like check, but I think it doesn't really expire, to be honest. And uh, Siemens record book itself, uh, I mentioned the ID. I think the Denmark now it does on online. Uh, everything is online, and they don't actually have hard Siemens books. Uh, they they do a, a, all the entries online, but um, just 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 a thing to consider. Okay. Last one. Do I need STCW safety certification? Um, so um, what I can tell you from my experience, I did mention I work for four cruise lines. And all the training was on board. I worked for the Yachts of Seaborne, which is a capacity of 450 passengers, 250 crew, um, and uh, and uh, even the small ship, um, they only had four of them, and the um, smaller ones were like 250 and uh, um, 250 guests and like 150 crew. If I'm not mistaken, I, I might be missing this. Um, and what happened was they still did the training on board. They need certified people who uh, certified people who actually can teach, not only get there. Of course, you're being trained only on the basics, and you need to complete the uh, training for the safety in two weeks on a ship. And the certificates are valid for five years. Um, and I did it on um, on the Yachts of Seaborn and Carnival Cruise Lines, which are Carnival Corp. They have uh, nine cruise lines altogether, and this is about 100 ships. And uh, I think in the last numbers I checked down, there's about um, 350, uh, 350 uh, cruise ships at the moment. I think 100 belongs to Carnival Corp. Uh, Royal Caribbean is a bit changing now. They One was sold off on cruise line. They had a uh, um, cruise line sell for 25 ships. And then they had another three brands. I think one was three, which was they only had a half of it. But Royal Caribbean had the training on board as well. And same as Carnival after the disaster of, of, of uh, Costa. Cruise line of the ship. Um, um, going up on the sandbank uh, next to the coast. So in Carnival, everything is centralized. So it's the same training. Um, just to have the, all between the older ships. That's why they made the big change, and that was told by a safety officer. Royal Caribbean, I think they're doing the same thing as well, and that could be adding another about 40 ships to that. Um, NCL, they have like another two brands as well. I don't know about NCL, but I think they do it on board as well. That's a number of like 30 ships or something, I guess, or 40. Now, it always comes to the 200. Um, um, and all this, and then there is MSC. MSC, um, so MSC... If you go on a different cruise uh, cruise line, and then there, the, the training is also specific for the ship because ships layout, your duties may be different because there are not so many people. So uh, still, if you have a valid certificate and go for a different company, they're still going to ask you to do the certification. Um, but um, MSC do not actually have the training. But I spoke to my co colleague, I, I didn't mention that. I do call up my friends uh, or text them and I ask them, okay, how did it did go? So he went for the MSC and I, I've actually offered a, a contract as well. They have like 16 or 20 ships now as well. So basically most of them covered by the big cruise lines that have the older safety, even on the smaller ships. So I would say like, you know, it's like almost about 70% or 75, you're not going to be needing to do STCW. Um, it's going to be done on board and you're going to be redoing it. Uh, it's uh, basic training. Um, so my colleague did it for MSC actually, and um, when I got my offer, I had a valid uh, certificate still, and um, there was one like um, there's basic firefighting, there is a rescue, uh, there is uh, different um, different sections. I'll mention them later on in this separate video, but uh, and they um, so. They didn't actually take one of the certificates because it said, uh, thing, I think it said like basic firefighting training with um, with restrictions. So it didn't include the full ba uh, firefighting. So you're not going to be working with uh, um, 
you're going to be part of the um, firefighter team. You're just going to be basic training and then you need to look after the guests. So they wanted me to do that, so only one certificate. Um, my colleague actually um, did a training himself in 2014. And he went to Bulgaria actually. So if if they say like um, the safety training costs like a thousand in US and it costs like from nine hundred till nineteen hundred in EU, um, which could be right actually in United Kingdom or maybe in France or maybe in Italy. But he did it actually in Bulgaria and Bulgaria is part of EU. So he actually did it in 2014 for three hundred uh, dollars. I think that was dollars. He said yes, that was dollars. <laughs> um, and uh, it was only lasted three days, not five days like the other ones. Uh, he said uh, it was still in English, so he still needed to pay for hotels. So if you need to travel and it's not not next to your home, so he needed to stay there for three days. He got the certificates, and then he, what he said is like, you know what? I went on board on uh, MSC and the ship I was assigned. And they gave me the same training for the same certificates, actually. So I don't know what's going there. But um, they will definitely tell you if you need to do STCW. It's investment, of course. It's lots of money. It's time. Um, you can go on the choose a different cruise line. And I think the small expedition boats that had like, I don't know, 100 guests and they have like a crew of uh, 40 or something, they definitely don't have the trainings on board because there's literally no space. And uh, this is how how how, how it's gonna be. And uh, since I mentioned all the big cruise lines, they all are there. Basically, more than half of the ships in the world, or even more than that, companies you don't need a STCW safety training. Uh, so and. Uh, and I'm going to be doing the video about what it is and how, how in detail on all this, and uh, that's what it is. So uh, yeah, and uh, I did mention as well for five years. This basically actually concludes all the documents you're going to be needing to get after the interview, and. Uh, uh, of course you can do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you uh, cannot. Um, I did mention the order how I would do it, uh, one after another. I had something to show up. These are my personal documents. These are not company documents, so uh, this is pretty accurate. Uh, I did my research as well. I contacted my friend for the more information. And uh, as always, Paul, thank you for watching. I hope you find it useful. Uh, leave the comment below. Uh, and of course, um, thank you, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.